Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching the I Hornbill TV's English News Bulletin. Now, headlines. U.S. President Joe Biden conveyed his unwavering support for Israel's security and also committed to deepening the cooperation between the two countries during a meeting with his Israeli counterpart, Rivlin Rivlin. There was an upheaval along the Sam Nagaland border on May 27 where there is a border dispute. A month after the incident of firing reportedly from either side of the border, administrations from the two sites held cordial discussions. Union Health Minister Dr. Haj Badun on Tuesday said the second wave of COVID-19 is still not over and our experience of one and a half year tells us we should not let our guards down under any circumstances. There was an upheaval along the Sam Nagaland border on May 27 where there is a border dispute. A month after the incident of firing reportedly from either side of the border, administrations from two sites held cordial discussions. Updates stated that they assured the public that the matter would be placed before the central government for resolution at the earliest. The Delta variant of COVID-19 was identified in May this year in Mukokchung district during its highest peak of positive cases, said an epidemiologist. The Delta variant first identified in India and is now detected in at least 85 countries is reportedly the most transmissible. World Health Organization has also labelled the B.1.617.2 a variant of concern. Mukokchung was experiencing a dire situation during May to June and positive cases were accelerating daily as it even recorded the highest peak of 164 positive cases, accumulation of two days result in June 5. However, the dedicated team of healthcare workers was able to flatten the curve within a month, which usually requires at least two months, claimed the doctor. The doctor said that by May 12, COVID-19 positive cases in the district were accelerating and specific samples sent to the Regional Medical Research Center of Dibrugar in Assam for genome sequencing had also arrived by May 26, confirming four of the samples were of the Delta variant. The doctor further asserted that the surging positive cases in the district were able to drive down because of fast and pragmatic response from the medical team and cooperation from all sections. However, the doctor warned that the region is not out of the second wave and that it is too early to celebrate because if people are not careful, the situation is going to flare up. The official also lamented that non-cooperation during contact tracing or reluctance to disclose close contacts creates a huge challenge for health workers in tracking down cases of infection. In this connection, he appealed all to cooperate with the authority during contact tracing and to follow COVID-19 appropriate behavior. Another doctor also asserted that at least 80% of the eligible beneficiaries should be vaccinated to prevent the third wave adding there are adequate vaccine stocks in the district. According to the COVID dashboard, a total of 50,917 vaccine doses have been administered in Mogokchung, which is approximately around 50%, said a medical official. Naga Bollywood singer N.K. Naga has been invited by event organizers Confluence to attend an upcoming event, Bharat Mautsav Festival of New, New India at Geneva in Switzerland. According to updates, the event is from September 7 to the 11th and will mark the 75th anniversary of Indian independence. The event will also have fashion, craft, culture, business and women empowerment themed events. N.K. Naga will be representing Nagaland as one of the best upcoming singers from the region. Mr. Naga informed Hornbill TV that he has been named to receive an award called Most Talented Singer. His first original Hindi song, Kese Jiu, is a popular song among his fans and since then he has never looked back. The Sangam Bridge near Pangin and Boling in Siang District in Arunachal Pradesh collapsed on June 29th morning in about 9 according to updates. Reports say that the bridge was washed away with a 10-wheel truck that was reportedly loaded with stone boulders and along with it three persons too. The vehicle and occupants of the vehicle are unable to be rescued due to the heavy rain in fast-flowing water. Sangam in the confluence point where the Siang River and Yumko River meet. 
Above the area is a beautiful bridge called the Sang Sangam Bridge where people stop and take videos and photos. The bridge connects Bangin and Boling in Siang district. Now Bangin has been cut off from Pasikat near Rotung and from Boling after the incident. Commuters are requested to not travel before latest updates from authorities. U.S. vaccine manufacturing giant Moderna has secured restricted emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine in India. The approval was granted by the Drug Controller General of India, DCGI, the government said on Tuesday. Besides this, Indian drug manufacturer Sibla has given permission to import Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine and market it in the country. Following today's developments, Moderna has become the fourth COVID-19 vaccine that will be used in India's vaccination drive. The vaccines that India is currently using are Covishield. It was developed by the Oxford University and AstraZeneca and is manufactured in India by the Pune-based Serum Institute of India. Covaxin. It was developed and manufactured by Bharat Biotech in collaboration with the Indian Council of Medical Research. Sputnik V. It was developed and manufactured by Kamalia Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology in Russia. Union Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan on Tuesday said the second wave of COVID-19 is still not over and our experience of one and a half year tells us we should not let our guards down under any circumstances. He was speaking at a virtual conference also attended by Delhi Lieutenant Governor Anil Baijal, Delhi Health Minister Sadhyantra Jain and other stakeholders to review preparedness for controlling vector-borne disease in the national capital. The second wave of COVID-19 is still not over, the minister said. Cases have definitely gone down sharply in Delhi but experience of 1.5 years says that people should not relax under any circumstances, the minister said. People and the society should also not be allowed to relax and the people have to be alert, the minister said. Reposing faith in the vaccines, he added that fortunately for the past six months, the vaccine is also available. So, through COVID-appropriate behavior and by getting more and more people vaccinated, India can perhaps get success in the fight against COVID in the time to come, the minister said. The Supreme Court on Tuesday issued a slew of directions to the centre and state governments ordering them to provide dry ration to migrant workers and continue community kitchens for them till the pandemic continues. A bench of Justice Ashok Bhushan and Justice M.R. Shah also directed the centre and states to complete the registration of all migrant workers, including those in the unorganised sectors, positively by July 31st. The top court has set July 31st as a deadline to implement the One Nation, One Ration Card scheme. It also asked the centre to develop a portal in consultation with the NIC to register unorganised and migrant workers and complete the portal and commence the process not later than July 31st. It directed the centre to allocate and distribute additional food grains as per demands of the state for the migrants. The directions of the Apex Court came while delivering the verdict in the application filed in the already pending case registered by the court Suomoto relating to the welfare of migrant workers during the lockdown due to COVID-19. The Supreme Court on Tuesday directed that by July 31st, 2021, all states and union territories must implement the One Nation, One Ration Guard scheme that allows migrant laborers to get ration benefits from any part of the country, irrespective of the place where the ration card is registered. One Nation, One Ration Card is a scheme implemented by the Government of India providing for nationwide portability of National Food Security Act ration card. A bench of Justice Ashok Bhushan and Justice M.R. Shah said One Nation, One Ration Card is an important citizen-centric reform. The court is of the view that those states who have not yet implemented One Nation, One Ration Card scheme should implement the same, it stated. The court directs the states that have not implemented the One Nation, One Ration Card scheme to implement the scheme by not later than July 31, 2021, the court ordered. The top court also directed the centre and state governments to provide dry ration and continue community kitchens for migrant workers till the pandemic continues. The top court further directed the centre and states to complete registration of all migrant workers, including TOS, in unorganised sectors positively by July 31, 2021. Further, the centre was asked to develop a portal for registration under National 
Database for Unorganized Workers in Consolidation with National Informatics Center do register unorganized and migrant workers and complete the portal and commence the process by July 31, 2021. When the unorganized workers are waiting for registration and are waiting to reap the benefit of various welfare schemes of the states and center, the apathy and lackadaisical attitude by the Ministry of Labor and Employment is unpardonable, the Apex Court said. The bench said there was urgency in the portal to be finalized and implemented, looking to the pandemic and dire need of unorganized workers to receive the benefit. A 13-year-old boy in Karnataka's Devangir district has been diagnosed with a rare post-COVID complication, acute necro-disease encephalopathy of childhood, ANEC, which affects the brain. The patient has been in the hospital for the past few weeks and is showing some improvement now. 13-year-old boy in the Wangir district of Karnataka has been diagnosed with a rare post-COVID complication that affects the brain. Dr. Kalampa Navar, Medical Director, Shama Nur, Shivas Kankar Appa Institute of Medical Sciences, Davangri, said, The patient has acute necrotizing encephalopathy of childhood and has been in the hospital for the past one week and now he is showing some improvements, Dr. Kalampa Navar said. He also said that the child came with a history of high-grade fever, headache, fever, vomiting and developed respiratory failure the same day. According to him, this might be the first case of the post-COVID ANEC. An early diagnosis and treatment of the disease are vital in order to decrease the chances of fatality. Delhi government on Monday issued circular directing school authorities not to deny admission of children on the ground that they have declared the name of only one parent. All the heads of schools of all managements under the Department of Education are hereby directed to not deny admission to the candidates who have filled details of even one of the parents in the application form while taking admission, a circular of the Delhi government's Directorate of Education said today. Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia took to social media to announce the decision. No school in Delhi shall deny admission to a child on the grounds that the child is declaring the name of his or her single parent only, tweeted Sisodia. A Kap Panjayat has allegedly imposed a total boycott on three families in Bala in Jodhpur's Bilara area for raising their voice against wildlife hunting. Being an environment lover, said a member of one of the boycotted families, they have been working to protect wildlife for the past three to four years. In the recent past, many hunters were arrested on their tip-off and because these hunters are influential, the Kap Panjayat imposed a boycott on three families, said the individual. All three families are under house arrest for the past 20 days and no help is coming their way, he added. Another family said that from June 5th, the families have been boycotted by the villagers for the campaign launch for wildlife safety. Shops have been prohibited from selling to the families any products and they are facing financial issues as well, the family said. Additional SP Jodhpur Sunil K. Power said that the Bilara station house officer is investigating the matter. U.S. President Joe Biden conveyed his unwavering support for Israel's security and also committed to deepening the cooperation between the two countries during a meeting with his Israeli counterpart, Rivlin Rivlin. During the meeting at the White House on Monday, the two leaders also discussed the many challenges facing the region, including the threat posed by Iran, according to an official readout. Rivlin is due to retire next month after the end of his seven-year term. Biden also emphasized that under his administration, Iran will never get a nuclear weapon, said the White House readout. He also assured President Rivlin that U.S. remains determined to counter Iran's malign activity and support for terrorist proxies, which have destabilizing consequences for the region, it read. Australia reported a slight rise in COVID-19 infections on Tuesday, while officials in several states tightened movement curbs and pushed for vaccinations to limit flare-ups of the highly infectious Delta variant. After months in which it had nearly stamped out the virus, Australia is battling the variant in five of its eight states and territories just two weeks after an infection in key city Sydney involving a limousine driver of overseas airline crew. Worries that the variant first detected in India could touch off outbreaks have forced lockdowns in three large cities and gerbs of varying strictness in several more, affecting more than 20 million Australians or about 80% of the population. 
Northern Queensland state imposed a three-day lockdown in capital Brisbane and neighbouring regions from Tuesday evening. The Western Australian capital of Perth began a four-day lockdown from Tuesday, joining Sydney and Darwin. Sydney, home to fifth of Australia's population, is in a two-week lockdown until July 9, while a stay-home order in the outback city of Darwin was extended by 72 hours to Friday. The Sydney outbreak has grown to nearly 150 cases. Mandatory masks and limits on gatherings are among the curbs across Australia. That's all we have for tonight's English News Bulletin and also for other updates, please do follow us on our social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube at Hornbill TV Official. That's all we have for now. Good night.